Hola mi amigos, me amo Marco Mac, and this is the AEW fans review of All Elite Wrestling's Dynamite and this episode is brought to you by Flips when you need a salty, chocolate, tasty snack, have a Flips and it's also brought to you by Brewdog delicious IPAs, Scottish, Scottish great beer and neither of those companies sponsored us I'm Jordan Barnes, and I might as well throw in another cheap plug for someone who doesn't sponsor us, Moosehead, a good Canadian beer. There you go. That's all the products that don't sponsor us, that should sponsor us. I can barely speak. I've got some weird spot thing on my neck, and this is a review show. So let's get cracking with the knacking. Quick swig of beer. Mmm, that's delicious. I could only mean one thing. My first is needing quenched because we had a 30 minute motherfucking Iron Man match. Jordan, how good was this match? Talk to me. <laughs> it was phenomenal. Like, any time we can get Pac and Kenny in the same ring for 30 minutes. Mm. It, it was just it was amazing the, the spots were crazy I wasn't super pumped with the finish but that's a different thing but like just everything they did in that ring was phenomenal the storytelling alone was no, fantastic there was no um, hangman it was the bucks that came to the ringside with Kenny that was a him. little odd to me a little bit odd to me but well, I kind of get it but it built on the story well, it was a thing. It was a kind of a, 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 an, an, illu an illusion. And can you have an allusion? Jim Ross alluded to the fact that they had he had an interview, and Hangman sort of took the hump and walked out. So he sort of gave a little bit of a backstory as to why they weren't there. Yeah. Um. But this was brilliantness. They started off with some nice chain wrestling. A one winged <coughs> angel was reversed into a brutalizer, quite early on. There was your usual Snapdragon suplexes in there. Uh, there was a, a br that brain buster that Pac did from the top rope. Holy oh. smoke. That was like, that was mental. Like, well, what about the Falcon Arrow he did onto the floor? Oh, jeez. Like, that was crazy. Kenny's face, he just went, it, it, you, you felt every single bit of that. Every single bit. <coughs> The pain on his face, man. I mean, when people say that Kenny Omega can't, or the Bucks can't sell, or Kenny Omega can't sell, yeah. or whatever, nah, man, no way. That's just, that's just not. If valid. anything, he oversells. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. He oversells, if anything. Yeah. But, to an extent, yeah, I can, I, I can, I can understand that. Yeah. Um, well, like, just, <laughs> that's what the that's what the fans started chanting. They started chanting, "You're a bastard! You're a bastard!" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Parker thought that was cool. Oh, it was so good. Well, and just even the little spots, well, I shouldn't call it a little spot, but where Kenny kicks out at one, mm -hmm. just explodes out. Love that. That was great. That was showing some real some some, yeah. some real power there, some real, like, some good storytelling again. It was like, nah, 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 nah. You're not, you're not going to get a pinfall this easy because the first person to give up the pinfall was going to be potentially on, on the losing end. Um, yep. Yeah. And then just after the ten minute mark, with the Tiger Driver ninety eight, a close call came from that. Yep. There was a German and uh, from a one winged angel. It was reversed into a German. That was another close fall. Yep. Um, and then we had the first fall when Park was like sack this. He went outside, mm. took the chair, hit Kenny with the chair, hit him mm. over the head with the chair, and that was our first ever disqualification in AEW. Yep. <laughs> yeah. There we go, we finally got a DQ. <laughs> yeah. You may remember I predicted that, but not in this match. Not in this not match. In this Previously on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now remember, remember. They haven't done it yet. I know they haven't done it yet. Now, every week I come up with a theory for a match where we get our first DQ, and this is your first time doing it. So see if you're right. I'll <laughs> hit the fucking roof <laughs> if you're right first time. <laughs> yeah, but still kind of counts. Yeah, well, you, well, you predicted. I mean, I predicted it for every show, and I think this was the one did. week when I gave up and went. Ah. <laughs> it's not going to happen this week, and it did. Yeah. Then, oh, and then the shooting star press through the table. 
that, that was, was a, impressive. That was after the referee, he drop kicked the referee. He drop kicked one of the Bucks. No. He drop kicked somebody into the referee because the doctor had come out at this point because Kenny hurt his leg. But everything, what I've noticed, the, the, the timing in, in all elite wrestling is, is, it's almost, it's clinical. It's so yeah. scientific because sometimes when you watch other wrestling shows and WWE and stuff, you know when a spot's coming up because someone's waiting around and stuff, but it was just on point. It just happens naturally. And then the natural timing of these guys is ama- are amazing. Got his knees up. He blocked the Black Arrow because obviously Pac had done the Black Arrow to get his pinfall back immediately yep. after using the chair, which is very smart. You want you want to weigh him down. And then and then it led up to the the brutalizer at the end where Kenny Omega just he just wouldn't tap wouldn't out. Tap. Come on, Kenny, tap out. Tap out. Do not reverse this into a pin. Tap, 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 Kenny. I want this point. Tap. Come on, tap. Don't get to the rope. Come on, Kenny, tap, you mother... Oh, come on. Yes, he's got it again. Yes, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Come on. Come on, tap. Fuck off. Yep. And the clock's counting down. And there's one thing that didn't happen here. And I'm so glad that it didn't happen. Because it would have pissed me off so much. Was the moment the timer ran out. Kenny didn't tap. You, you go back and watch any sort of WWE match. They've done it in TNA as well. Where there's a time limit. And as soon as that timer runs out. The person taps out. Like if it's anything to do with submission, because it's almost like, oh, you almost just had it. No, no. Kenny was no. like, I'm not giving up. The dog is playing me a goddamn ball. It's Gotham's birthday today, so I'm letting him away with more stuff that I should let him away with, and he's playing me a ball. <laughs> but yeah, I was glad he didn't do that. I would have liked Pac to get the win. I thought it was a pity. I really think it would have made more sense, but at the same time, it worked out well. Mm-hmm. Sudden death, come on. Come on, Pac. Oh, come on, Pac. It's over. Ah, fuck off, man. Please kick out. Ah, bullshit. Bullshit. I do not agree with that. Pac Pac needed that win. That's bullshit. I've just realised that I've got I've got two beers open at the same time. There you go. Perfect. Rock and roll. Uh, and that led us into oh no we did, we had a we had the interview after that when Pac went to the top of the stage and Tony Schiavone. Yeah. Asked him. Asked, it, Tony Schiavone man he was he was like Charlie was it Charlie Caruso was it from WWE yeah. where she's just a bitch to everyone. <laughs> In fact, the people were booing Tony for asking him that question. Like, you didn't you beat up all his friends? You did all this stuff, and then you lose. What are you? What's going on there? <laughs> and Pat's like, you taking a piss out of me? <laughs> yeah, I love that. That was great. And then the Orange Cassidy thing was, <laughs> I know. was pretty good. I liked I, it. Out of nowhere. Yeah, I I really like that. That was good. Completely out of nowhere. Uh, yeah. Then our next match. Inner Circle versus Jurassic Express. You called the finish on this one. Did I? I'm pretty sure you did, yeah. You said that um Darby Darby Allen did Darby Allen not interfere yeah. in this match? Uh, yeah, yeah, you called the finish. You said that what would happen is Darby um Sammy would have the loaded sock. And Darby yeah. Allen, I'm pretty sure you said that. And Darby Allen would Something stop him. Like that. Mm-hmm. I remember watching it yeah. and going, "Damn, he called this. He called it straight on. He, he got it right." Previously on Maro's place, they they don't have to win. They don't unless unless Darby Allen somehow costs Sammy the match. But that's quite a heel thing to do. <laughs> he got he got it down to a T. And then Jungle Boy. Hora Karana and gets the pin which was a nice win for Jungle Boy builds him up a little bit more gets him another singles win yeah that was that was good I, I honestly thought that Inner Circle was going to win mm-hmm. but 
I have no problem with Jurassic Express winning that match at all. No, not at all. And I liked that Jim Ross reiterated that it was a ten count when the guys yeah. were in when, the, when there was two when two tag team guys were in the ring. So he, re- he reiterated that a couple of times on the show, and I, and I, and I liked that. I also liked the multiple suicide dives that Jungle Boy mm-hmm. did at the start of the match, and obviously Luchasaurus when he came in, he just cleaned house. He was just the thing with Luchasaurus is he does these moves, he does these kicks, and they kind of look like they're they're a bit slow, but the impact. It's, well, like, he, it's like half speed the snap but, on them is hey, unbelievable it's yeah just, it's like he'll do a thing like he'll do a thing with his leg but he'll bring his leg up and then the leg will stop and then he'll, he'll sort of flick it <laughs> I love how Luchasaurus yeah. is doing that and then of course it was uh, the biggest fucking tragedy travesty and all of sports not just wrestling it was the butcher the bunny and the blade versus the best friends yeah, I know this one hurt you. What a pile of shite. Come on. The match itself well, is good. Let's know how you really feel. Ah, fuck. I just, I like best friends. I do. They got all their shit in. They did their soul food. Trent got the hot tag as usual. But the butcher, the butcher looks strong. He's a big dude. They've been making him look strong the last few weeks. He looked great in the Battle Royal. So they've really been making him look like a, like a powerhouse. And he was, he was, he was looking great. But I just feel so annoyed. I'm just like, oh, fuck, man. They, need, they needed a win here. They needed a win. And I knew there was going to be a little spot with Ali and Orange Cassidy. So it's cool when she, um, she takes his sunglasses off. And then he yeah. takes her bunny ears and puts her bunny ears yeah. on. I thought that was so cute. Yeah. I really liked that. I really yeah, liked that. Yeah, that was really good. I'm disappointed he didn't actually have a glass of orange juice, freshly squeezed orange juice, like I thought. Like but the cup? It was yeah. still good. The cup spot. And then... Man dives out, takes out the blade, which is which is outside interference. He, he, come on, man, that's a DQ. He takes out the the blade and then no the I the blade and then strong zero. The wrong the wrong team won. Yeah, it it was an entertaining match though, and I am disappointed that they went the way they did with the finish, but I I don't think any less of Butcher and Blade because they lost. No, I like don't. I still, I still am behind them. I don't think any less of them. I'm just, I'm just frustrated. I'm just annoyed. I, I get, I really got a bit hot. I fucking should have my phone on. Get that on silent. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I love the guys. I just wish that they got the win. But anywho, there's still time to build them up. Yep. Uh, what was next? Tony, Tony Schiavone gets in the ring. Scavoni. What, what? How does Jericho announce it? Skiavani, I think. Skiavani. They announced Pack versus Cassidy for Revolution. Yeah. Just thinking, how's that match going to work? Like, how's Pack going to react to this comedy stuff? Yeah. It, there were so many questions when that got announced. My favorite part of that was when Trent goes, he might try, he might not. He hasn't yeah. told us yet. <laughs> yeah. Please and don't. The cra- please don't try. <laughs> yeah, the crowd. Please don't try. It was great. And I love the bit with him. The, I don't. The, the. I guess you would have seen this in picture in picture, where Tony Schiavone does the hug. Yeah. He does the hug. hug he puts the sunglasses the on. on. Yeah. yeah. You've got to give the people what they want. <laughs> oh, Excalibur, yeah. love it. Yeah. Next was um, four women match. You had Yuka. You had Shida. You had Shana. And you had Swole. Yep. Yeah. Was alright. Yeah, it's a solid match. It's pretty decent. Yeah, they they struggled a little bit with some spots in the ring. It just looked a little choppy. But again, who am I to say? I've never been in a ring. I can't say what was going on. Just the way that it looked. But a lot of it goes down to what I say is they, they don't wrestle each other enough. So yeah, you're 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 learning people's styles. You're not wrestling yeah. them day in and day out at a performance center. Yeah. But yeah. I really enjoyed the match. It was it was lots of fun. They had some cool little things they did. Well, you I got you the... got your Shida win because you said Shida was going to win. We both picked Pack, so we lost. Uh, yep. You you actually did pick Jurassic Express, by the way. You didn't pick the Inner Circle. So oh, you, did I? Yeah. So you Good actually for me. you actually got two results up on me. Uh-huh. Yeah. So mm, what can I say? And then after that, it was the sit down interview. Jim Ross. Sitting down 
with Paige, uh, the Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega. This interview was fantastic. Hang Mega! It was really good. Yeah, it was very, very entertaining. The story they were telling, it, the way it came across, is that the Bucks were being the heel, mm-hmm. and then it was, it was really good. Saying that he was a jobber in Ring of Honor and. I, I like it. I like oh. his thing about they're trying to take away his biggest accomplishment. And Which I is true. It. Yeah, it it's really is. And they're saying we're the best tag team in the world and you're not. Yeah. I, you know, it's like, man, you arrogant little shits. You're so arrogant. Yeah. It just really anno- it fucking yeah. <laughs> annoyed they me. They did a good job. Yeah. They really annoyed I, me. I sided on Hangman after that. I was disappointed that I had already picked. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but... He's, he ran out of beer, so he was off. And, and Jim yeah. Ross was pr- was asking him quite provoking questions, like, "Oh, you know what's wrong with you? You look like I'm going to kill this dog. Go off him, <coughs> take that ball and get it to fuck." <laughs> He's driving me up the wall. But yeah, high man's like, "Don't have a drink. I'm out of here." Hangman took his ball and went home, which is what I think Gotham should do right now because he's making a hell of a lot of noise. It's his right. birthday. Let him do what he wants to. It is his birthday. And then it was the final part of the show. We had the way in. <laughs> I thought the whole... I thought the whole... The, I was going to say pomp and circumstance, but that's not the right word. It was like a... It was a It was a show. It was just over the top. It was ridiculous. The yeah. tracksuits we... Um, the pain, I pain loved maker it. I lo- posse pain maker posse I loved it absolutely loved it I loved that they came in the ring in like a little like kind of conga line and we're all like tight moving in motion yeah there's, a, there's, was... a, there's a clip I have to put in because you only saw it if you were on fight TV and as they were all coming to the ring it cuts to picture in picture or maybe it just cut to a commercial in the states and they've got these two hot girls that come out they're just dolly yeah. birds right they're a bit of eye candy and Jim Ross says on the mic, "Holy what shit! Is... What is that?" <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then all of a sudden the sound cuts it. <laughs> yeah. I After thought he him... could have said a lot worse. A lot oh, worse. Oh, oh yeah. Well, after watching it on Fight TV, now thank you. It it is so much different. Like to hear their like talk between commercials because mm-hmm. sometimes they're talking like they know people are watching yeah, yeah and sometimes they just talk like they don't care they just like so there's some care. things you hear and you're like wait what and then they'll all of a sudden be like yeah and we're gonna be in blah 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 next week you can buy tickets here it's like oh okay yeah it's, it's funny it's funny yeah i love it when they, i love it when they do that it makes it makes me laugh yeah um i would jericho yeah. i i can't remember the guy's name that was the, that was doing the announcing i know he's quite famous but it's when Jericho says, "Hold on, you weird little man." <laughs> I already said that to him. Yeah. Oh, it was great. And Mox is two hundred and thirty-four pounds, and then Jericho. I love the fact that Jericho wouldn't get on the scales. You know, Foker yep. was talking about his weight. I called that. I you did. Called that. You did call that. You did. Previously on Jericho. What I would like to see happen would be Moxley start just throwing shots at Jericho about having a dad bod. <laughs> yes, yes, and, and and Jericho not wanting to weigh in. Mm-hmm. I keep lifting an empty beer. No, you did call that. That was quite smart. Yeah. And that headbutt—that yeah. was a hard way, by the way. There was no blading involved there. That was a. Ooh, he busted him open good. That was a. Fruit. But it just made everything look so much better when he hits him with his with the paradigm shift onto the scale I was like yeah mm-hmm. this is perfect that was that was a perfect ending to that and I loved how it all yeah. just went crazy you dusting brawling with Hager that yeah. goddamn dipping dots for the love of God stay away from the dipping dots <laughs> <laughs> I love that goddamn God dipping damn dots, dipping dots. <laughs> I mean, they never hurt nobody they never hurt nobody <laughs> oh no oh not the dipping dots the damn dipping dots didn't do anything to anybody that's heat and then you had uh, Sammy comes out and then he actually gets the upper hand on Darby because Darby got the upper hand on him earlier on so yeah. that, that balanced that out for their match and then Moxley took a Judas effect and then the DDT on the scales yep yep what can we say on the scales which again Jericho never got weighed Mm-mm. 
He, he never stepped on the scale, he which is my scales. favorite part. Favorite part. It was amazing. It's a subtle story, but it's so funny. But yeah, like I don't know if I would have done that any differently. Like that. No. That was really good storytelling. And I then, like was... I said, there's going to be a big melee. Well, there you have it. That was another solid episode of AEW Dynamite. I'm not going to do my usual shit when I say that was one of the best top three episodes, and you know I've now got to try and rank them all. It was solid. It was awesome. It was yeah, good. It was a good episode. It was fun. Yeah, the only thing that was missing was uh, a little bit between MGF and Cody. I felt like that was missing. They could have done with that in there. But aside from that, I don't really have any other complaints. Neither do I. I I liked it through and through. I would have rather Pac still win that match. It just makes way more oh, yeah. sense to me. Sorry, Pac, I forgot about that. But it was a good show. Good matches, good wrestling, good comedy, good Had drama. everything. It's a variety show. everything you need. Yeah, exactly. That's and, why we and, like wrestling. And as a go home show, apart from the two points that we just mentioned, it was almost perfect. Let's see what happens when we get to Revolution. That's going to be an absolute barn burner of a show, if not potentially the pay per view of the entire year, because it's been built up to be something particularly special. Something that's going to maybe exceed expectations, which is hard to say in this day and age when it comes to wrestling. But we'll find out. But don't forget, like this video and subscribe to the channel because pff, you want to see your sexy gorgeous faces every week yes you do you don't pretend that you don't we'll see you on the next one and that's going to be the review of revolution yeehaw cowboy shit cowboy shit and ambrose or not ambrose moxley i'm sorry i'm sorry internet i'm sorry internet Moxley got crushed onto the scale. I can I can edit that, so that's fine. Gonna, <laughs> You're not I'm even going to let that get out there. No, I'm going to save you. <laughs> what I'll do is I might yeah. use that for one of the you know I do my my outtakes yeah. now at the end. Yeah, I'll I'm sorry, that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>